Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Classic Quest Podcast with your boy, HSR. And your lady friend, Bonnie. And this is where we talk about classic rap albums from all time. And, you know, we go through them track by track. We try to understand them. We give you our impressions. We have a little discussion about each song. And uh, looking at the art of the album and just, you know, the culture in general, understanding that we can be a little ignorant sometimes. So feel free in the comments <laughs> to uh, correct us along the way. You can be a little bit ignorant. But relax. <clears throat> <laughs> um, we do love our favorite comments. Like, I, I mean, every week we go through and I read every comment. So our favorite comment from last or two weeks ago's video on DMX's uh, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood is from Awais MC. Underrated album by an underrated artist. And we, Absolutely. That's what I would, I mean, that's kind of what I said. But yeah. I, I mean, I didn't know about like, maybe like the underrated album, but I definitely think that he's kind of a little bit of an underrated um, artist because he, he has the talent. He yeah. does. It's like, why don't people talk about DMX more? He's quite lovely. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we did that. Um, this uh, week, the request is driven through Patreon. Uh, so just a quick thanks to our patrons, uh, Ismail Gadamsi, Super Old School 1994, and Linda Williams. And basically once a month, we're going to do an album driven from Patreon. So we can talk a bit about that at the end. And this week, the album that we're going to do is a result of that. So this one is from Ismail Gadamsi. It's his choice. Bonnie, why don't you introduce the album we'll speak about? Well, um, this week, the classic album that we are um, reviewing um, is The Cy the Cycle Ram by Cycle Ram. Um, and that came out October 28th, 1997. Which is quite some time in the past if you... Mm -hmm. uh, I was just, um, you know, like a 10-year-old girl or something. Yeah, definitely a wee lad over here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, coming into this, I uh, knew who Be Real was. And yeah. as I understand it, he left the Psycho Realm not long after this album due to his obligations to Cypress Hill. Mm -hmm. And then the other two dudes are uh, Sick Jackin, and I hope I say that right, and, and Big, Big Duke. Duke. And uh, honestly, I'd never heard of them before this. I'd never heard of the Psycho Realm before this. So yeah. I went into this album pretty much completely blind. There wasn't a whole lot of easy to find information about them online. So I basically went into this with no expectations and unsure, except that I imagine that Be Real would be there doing what he does. And he sure was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, If you like Cypress Hill, you will like this. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, I don't know. I imagine you had a similar experience. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I had never, no, I mean, obviously to me, maybe not obviously to you, um, I had never uh, heard this album or heard of this album or this group um, before. Um, but, I mean, as soon as you put it on, like, you're like, oh, Cypress Hill. And <laughs> it yeah. just, like, makes you think of them. Um, I don't know if they appreciate that kind of, like, thought, but definitely because of, like, the same sort of, like, artist and same sort of feeling and a kind of like a latino like kind of mix in there as well and uh, you know similar i mean it's a similar vibe really um and similar time right. so i mean it, it definitely has that kind of feel to it but you know it, it sounds kind of like what they did except maybe a little i feel like a little bit less good <laughs> so i mean just to like pivot into like the album name and the cover, you just see like a dude with a gas mask on and a wife beater and like this greenish lighting in this like creepy looking room mm -hmm. and it just says the psycho realm, but even that's kind of faded. Like they, it looks kind of like it should be in like a, like a, like a, like a horror, movie. horror movie, yeah. But the only thing that's like super crystal clear, explicit lyrics, parental advisory. Yeah. Which I, I wonder if that's deliberate a little bit. Like, hey, they probably had to, well, but yeah. like. yeah, I mean, it's standard. But like, it almost adds to the aesthetic of this cover, right? Because it's the only clear thing is that you need a parental advisory to enter the psycho realm, which is all hazy and fuzzy and stuff. Yeah, come but on, like, mom and dad, we're going in here. I mean, it, it, it gave me almost the cinematic feel from the very beginning. And it, it made me feel like, even before listening to it, this is going to be an experience of sorts. Plus, um, I've... As we've gone through a few of Ismail's requests, they all tend to be a little <laughs> bit of experiences. Yeah, so that's, that's true. A little bit prejudiced thinking. But like thinking. usually good like experiences. I mean, from you know, yeah, from the past. Absolutely. Um, I don't have a lot more here uh, to say 
because yeah, jibber jabbering is aimless. And uh, <laughs> let's talk about psycho block slash psycho interlude. All right. All right, Bonnie, how do you feel about this one? Um, I mean, I mean, like I kind of was predicting or kind of assuming when I first listened to it, it definitely sounds like Cypress Hill. Like that's instantly the first um, thought that I had. Um, but it's, you know, it's pretty good and similar, obviously, to like that sound. Um, yeah, and it sounds like, you know, this is just kind of like how they are, like in like this kind of like cycle world. And this is how they grew up and what was normal for them. And, you know, just kind of saying like that. It's crazy, but it's their life, like all this kind of like nonsense that's like happening in their world. Um, and then the song like essentially ends at about like a minute, like 16, I think it is. Um, and basically just kind of carries on with them just like saying like that they're psycho. It goes on for a couple of minutes. Before. Yeah, because I mean, like, the entire the last, song is... like minute is the the the. Uh, interlude part. Or oh well, because yeah, the song essentially essentially is like four minutes fifty one seconds, and then like, um, yeah. So then there's like whatever. There's still like that bit of time at the end, um, and it was good. Like I really like this this one. Um, it has me kind of like feeling like comfortable with the sound because it's something that I've already heard before, and yet it's still kind of like a new experience because it's with different people. Um, it, I thought it was a good intro. I gave it a four point two five. I mean. What I first thought was, that guy sounds like Be Real. And I thought it was Be Real. But it turns out that it's actually Sick Jackin. And Sick Jackin kind of sounds a bit like Be Real on this. And I was a little bit confused. But I have to admire the fact that on this first track, they don't have Be Real. It's almost like we can hold it down without him and then just run it through. So he's like there to, to like be in the group, not to take over the presence of the group. I mean, I, I always feel like people make choices like that for those kinds of reasons. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it comes in. It just we came to drop these styles. It's no shock. We rock to the cops come and knock nonstop. We come from the psycho cities and blocks. We're raised by gunshots, low life, and hip hop. And it's just such an anthem, right? Like this is succinctly putting. I guess we come from this environment. We represent this type of thing. This is who we are, you know. But really, they come for the music and to drop this shit. And they're gonna come and like kind of keep it powerful with their bars. And then Big Duke has such a cool voice. It took a minute. I'm not going to lie. The first time I was like, he kind of doesn't – like my first reaction is he doesn't really sound as good as the other ones. And yeah. he kind of sound. But then I realized I was so wrong. And it's just he has this presence and this delivery and this style that really complements what the others are doing and really comes off cinematic and like pure emotional outlet. And I really came to enjoy his voice a lot. But like – Right off the jump, despite the rules, I choose to be one of the chosen f few, leaving you confused, dazed, and what you got you all amazed. How the fuck we could be so blaze? And so, like, if we, we just picture, like, from that environment they're coming from, and then the next little bit, he's like, yeah, but we choose to be better than that shit immediately, leaving you confused how we could achieve that shit. And I love that. This is how they're choosing to start the project. So whatever we're going to hear, whatever we're going to get, it's like an understanding that, it's this like is, their truth. Yeah, and like it's their realm and this their imaginations going off and they're painting the pictures and stuff, but they're 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 doing it because they're choosing to elevate above it and use their platform to bring attention to it and shit, you know? But like bullets and uh like think of all the bullet holes embedded in your area. Bullets bullets and at the end who gets shot by motherfuckers making hip hop. Ah, uh, it's just like I don't like I can't really understand that environment but like it just gives me this like dark tone to it where you can understand that the environment they're coming from this isn't some fake shit that they're spitting for the sake of attention they're trying to paint a reality and enlighten people for what it really is the fear the intensity of it you know yeah and then it just kind of like goes back and forth between the two of them um and they keep kind of flowing through it like but i really love like the power of big duke's words like due to violent environments crime terrorizes rhyme events i'm bringing the streets to the stage rocking them both uh on your front page la street families and crumbling weak legacy there must be some kind of a way out this pain said the joker chain smoking weed train take aim random cap and shoot a hooter captain and it's just like fuck man it's this desire for like a better circumstance like mixed with this grim reality of what's going on in the situation. I know I just read that whole part, but he just has this power to like 
use this language that ensnares and really effectively communicates the real sense of almost anxiety and emotional state that he's in. And I thought that was really fucking cool. Um, anyway, uh, moving on, uh, we got the hook again and it's fucking hype. And then the song just kind of rolls on out. Um, in general, you really get the sense of an introduction to their world, an introduction to who they are and how they fit into this world on top of this really banging beat that like, really kind of gets you head bumping like you can almost picture low riders and shit bouncing to it um i don't know it just feels like west coasty to me yeah, you know yeah, um, i agree and then it's really delightful it's like it's really enjoyable and then it transitions into this like mind trippy uh interlude where it's like you you, you just hear the psycho realm and different eerie voices and it's almost trippy so like they've come in with the hard hitting and then as it like fades out you almost get the psychedelic side of the experience where it's it's like ethereal and pretty next level and i feel like it really balances and completes the sound and really makes it for like an engaging like this is just more than like an album it's meant to really take you through a very meticulous journey and like they it's really planned out in an interesting way like it's hmm. It's definitely not so standard, you know? It's not just we're going to throw a bunch of tracks together. I really like that. I really like the immersion that they put in to make it just like the perfect outro to it. Yeah. I get it's a four and a half on five. I really enjoyed it. And then the next one on here is uh, Showdown. Damn, put your hands to the side. Are you aligned by the sunshine on your gun? All right, Bonnie. What do you think about this one? Um, I mean, this is the second um, track on this one. And, um, like... Anyways, I'll get into it after, I guess. Um, I mean, obviously, this one has, like, um, a few, like, Spanish words. So, like, you know, it definitely ha kind of has that, like, Latino kind of, like, vibe again to it. Um, and I like that. You know, I like, you know, when people obviously, like, incorporate, like, the parts of, like, their culture into, like, their music. I think that's important. Um, so this kind of, like, obviously, like, because of that has, like, again, similar feeling as, like, Cypress Hill. Um this one has a really interesting flow and beat that really, like stood out to me a lot, but like the song itself, like I guess like the lyrics didn't stand out to me. Um, but like I, I don't know, I really enjoyed the the beat and the drums, um, <laughs> and I really enjoyed like the hand drum that kind of like comes in like halfway through. Um, I I like that feeling. Um, so I mean, besides that, I didn't really have much else to say about this one. I gave it a four on five. Um, so if I understand correctly, we're in the psycho realm. And they're yes. all congregating over here, and things are about to have like a little showdown. Like run around downtown, clicks throw down in the mix, clowns and infinite showdowns, battlegrounds all break down, worlds upside down, making wicked smiles, wicked frowns. We go down, down with our own gangster sound, you know? Mm -hmm. So I guess they're just trying to establish that they're in the midst of this, you know, all the. It's almost like you can picture one of those gangster movies where like the Warriors or something where everyone like meets in the middle in their respective cliques and the shit's about to go down. That always makes me think of uh, Anchorman. I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know, they all kind of have fucking shanks of venom metal, rattlesnakes. Like, I guess there's dishonor. People aren't so be well behaved or respectful in the environment. Like, it's like anything vicious and awful is about to possibly go down. He's high, smoke a bunch of pot, ready to go. Street wars, etc. And then slick uh, jacking comes in. You know, out of the friction comes static, causing mad panic on the streets. The dramatic battles increase. We see more wars, less peace. We're even fighting police. And then I get the sense that they're kind of reporting on maybe some of the more criminal activity that they're witnessing at this time or mm -hmm. the gang situations and maybe paralleling it back to, like, this world that they're painting the picture of. But it's really, like... It sounds like really heartfelt, like they're they're almost doing like a cry that you can hear that this is a real situation that people need to be paying attention to because, you know, like when the police, they're the biggest enemies, lifestyles of the criminal be wild. You want to see more action, hold up, wait a while, you know. F f uh, fist crash, giants clash, putting on the face of the devil mask to him, brain bash. And you just like... You get the sense people are like masking up, hiding who they are. Things are getting intense. People are literally going at the police. They're becoming an enemy. I mean, none of this is, I guess, surprising here and now. But back then, it must have been, I guess, something that, like, I always really like admire when I hear these messages from like the '90s and stuff. And I realize, like, for so long, people have been pointing out some of these realities and stuff, and 
here we are in 2018 and it's like man this has been around for almost for what 21 years and you know yeah people i don't know it just kind of really makes me take things more seriously i guess you can say but i don't really understand the reality but i can empathize that this sounds like and then from like a, a literary front they are describing stuff with the kind of vivid detail that allows you to paint these pictures in your head of some serious shit. Like, you can fill in the blanks really well enough. Then there's the hook, which is just about the showdown, you know, the crazy in the head loco is about to throw down. Sounds a bit like Cypress Hill, you know. Yeah. Um, and then Be Real kicks in, and it's the first time we've seen him on the project. Although, to be fair, he was involved in production on pretty – I think all three of these guys were involved in production on most of the songs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and he comes in like, watch out, look out, look out, watch out um, for the showdown. You better slow down. Give me 50 feet or better. Keep your eye on the bow of the Beretta. The lead coming to wet you. All right. He's got a guy. He's doing his thing. I like when he goes, I'm a dominant motherfucker, but you're the opposite. There's just, there's nothing like super profound about it really, but it's just the way he says it, the way it just, it just sounds good. It has this like <laughs> swagger to him where he's just fucking fearless in the way he spit. In the way that he uh, spits his lines. Sorry about that. That was my cat dropping my cell phone. <laughs> um, anyway, it's pretty solid. Uh, I scrap it, illuminating the whole block. They all flock in anticipation. You're getting rolled by the Dayton. It kind of just rolls on through the the rest of the thing. I feel like like uh, Sick Jack in, though, and Big Duke on this track do so much more interesting stuff to paint this imagery, whereas Be Real kind of sounds a bit like flashier with his lyrics i'm not trying to criticize or anything it's just my impression of like i got sucked in with the other ones and then be real's verse sounds great because i really like his voice and how he raps but i think i like the other two more on this track um like we're heavy duty tanks this is my two chrome shanks criminal styles point blank you think the music is crazy like tony montana fumando marijuana con santana tomorrow Ugh, like it's just big duke sounds so fucking cool i don't know there's something about <laughs> it i really enjoy it uh I like the beat, but I like it a little bit less than the last one. I feel like it's a little slower, and they, uh, they like the dramatic effect and stuff, but I gave this one a 4.3. I think it's a cool song, and if I'm listening to the album, I love it. But let's say we're to break it into singles and put it on playlists. There's other songs I enjoy a lot more than this one. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm going to leave that one. Uh, did you give grade or? Yeah. Right. So let's talk about the big payback. All righty. Um, it was okay. I mean, there's, I mean, there's like a, a direct point to it. Obviously, um, it's basically just like a song about um, seeking revenge and committing crimes. And basically, the the overall message is that like if you fuck with them, they will there will be a payback, and you know they're gonna get you back, and there's gonna be revenge, and you can't just like get away with like causing shit because they're gonna like pay you back um and that's pretty much the gist of the song and it's not like a super long song it's like three minutes 23 seconds um so i mean obviously like i said the message is pretty clear but it's i mean and it works for like the the album it tells you like what's going on like kind of like their mentality and like where they're at and like how they're feeling about like anybody that like fucks with them but i mean for me it was good but it wasn't great this song um so i give it a 3.75 Honestly, um, I like it. It's a 4.5 right off the jump. Um, <laughs> like, Be Real comes in on this introduction for, and he's like, bring that shit once again, the psycho war, but like to bring you something new as we Maybe like a yelling through me the off big of it. <laughs> payback. And like, it's just this like crazy introduction, this big elaborate thing. Like, like, you can tell that they really care about the idea of putting on a show and making it like an experience. And I like that. Or like, they really take this super seriously for what they're trying to do mm -hmm. and i felt that but even like to the point of the message i like how sick jacking just starts it off with do you even know the reason for your blast and it's pointless you grab your stainless do your action and he stays motionless because of your error they label this era of terror drop the coke the mirror keep your nose clearer the outcome of what you've done shook slums arrivals i mean just look at that it's packaged it's almost like taking the picture of a guy who it was just fucking high. He just got high off a of coke or whatever. Blasted some guy randomly. It didn't even sound like there was a real purpose for it. It was just like yeah. a tough guy. It just shot him out, whatever. As a result of this, society is painting the hood in a particular light. As a result of this, 
there are certain implications and certain actions that are happening, you know? Yeah. And then the outcome of what you've done, Sheikh Slum's arrivals from other sides with guns, soldiers, and knives. You took one of their lives and finished it. Now they decide they want to retaliate, find your ass, and even shit. So because of the person he clipped is connected to other people, those people now want to come back and clip him and bring it there. And memory of lost souls in honor of their homeboys dying in the South lost. Now you don't even decide you want to hide. If they don't find what they're looking for, they shoot whoever is inside, your little street family. They drive by your block and shoot randomly. You think it's best to test, lead them on a quest, not cease, but in the end, you let one of your homeboys rest in peace. And I thought that was really powerful, just this whole verse, right? Because... It really breaks down, I guess, the retaliation, the retaliatory nature of, of gangs. And, and, like, basically how, like, it'll just never end because someone's always going to want to get payback and, like, the cycle will just constantly continue. But on top of that, just to, like, I guess add to it a little bit, um, if they can't find you because you're going to hide, you're going to find out they're coming, they're not afraid to come and, like, kill whoever. Like, just spray the block down. Just, like, all sorts of innocents are now getting caught up in the situation. So... When you initially commit your crime or you commit your murder because you're zonked out or whatever, you're not necessarily taking into consideration like the full impact of what is going to happen in response to this action. So you don't really understand the scope of it. So it goes from just you killing one person and then because they can't find you, they escalate it killing all these other people, which in turn creates almost like a butterfly effect of vengeance and shit. Yeah. And I thought that was powerful. Um, the chorus is fine. Uh, I'm looking for you. I'm going to get you back slipping when I catch you on the street. And that ass is mine. And it's fucking hyped up and it just kind of feels powerful. I could see how if you were in the state of mind to be going to do similar kinds of actions, this is some good rally music. <laughs> but even then, like, it has this authenticity to it. And I like authenticity. I'm very much drawn to it. And I find it really powerful. Um, Sick Jackin does the second verse as well. And it, he kind of like continues on, like maybe justifying like the other side of it now, right? So the first one, verse is a little critical of like, why are you doing it? And then the second one, it's like kind of pointing out, well, I'm in the south side, avoiding my death with cautious steps. I might end up serving a point for someone's rep. That's why a gun is kept. I will employ in services if I need to stop the plot from being murderous. So like, he's kind of pointing out, like, on the other hand, I live in this neighborhood where things happen and maybe just because that guy's trying to get into a gang or just because that guy's trying to like earn his stripes, I might become the victim of a situation. As a result, I need to come strapped and ready to go. And, you know, if I'm willing to use it, if need be, you know, I mean, kind of like just the rest of the verse follows through and like points out. Uh, you know, like they walk through life with wicked smiles and piles of loot. Don't hesitate to shoot in the quest of dead presidents. They're getting rich at the expense of dead residents. A lot of rascals causing deep fiascos. If you come across them, avoid them. Their mentality is blast those who ain't down with me. They got something I wanted, I'll take it. And it's, I think, kind of now starting to serve a bit of a cautious warning to you, the listener, to avoid certain types of situations because these toxic mentalities are, are driven in a way to make certain people rich like kill off people so at the point of others profit and whatnot and they you know just want you to be a little aware and more cautious of a situation i really like this song i really think it's powerful i really think it's cool it it shows like that wisdom of some guys who passionately care about their neighborhood trying to use the truth as a message to like breed a, a better culture around them and i think that's amazing you know and so, yeah, great song. I could totally keep listening to it. <laughs> the next one, though, is really interesting to me. It's Premonitions. All right, let's check it out. Station rating, no escape. Situations escalate in the tape of 2000. This is like Be Real's dreams of the end of the world with some Spanish uh kind of interloped uh as the choruses so unfortunately i didn't understand the spanish but it, you know big duke sounds fucking dope still uh i did want to bring some attention to am i paranoid why in my dreams have i seen the whole world destroyed civilization raped in no escape situations escalate in the date of 2001 revelations or is it just my imagination invasion whatever what happened in 2001 that may have escalated a lot of things that 
invasions. Maybe Be Real has uh, predicted happening here. Oh, it's a premonition, like premonition. It's like a meta thing. Yeah, I think he um, he sees how the war is coming and the bad things. I mean, he puts up war drums, suicide missions, prosecution, execution, revolution, mass confusion, all over, ready for it. He's a soldier. So he's prepared for all of this stuff. Let's be real. Since 97, many of those words could be used to have described things that have happened with a serious escalation point being uh, September 11th of 2001. Yeah. That's super fucking interesting how many people were able to, like, come to that kind of, like, like the fact that he was able to predict the year in shape, like, oh, it's going to escalate there. I wonder what he said when it happened. Like, I just wonder. <laughs> And then he keeps it going, like televisions, trackers and citizens, massacres and cashless systems, the new border with no border, uh, the new order with no border, like the internet, like literally Bitcoin, like literally like every one of these things. He's like the NSA spying on people, um, renegades to rule over the new age malaise. Like if you look at the trolls in the negative situations, I mean, almost every bar of this song kind of presents the psychological marketing war that is happening today and now in the world. Yep. And I got to give Be Real some fucking serious credits because, like, that was fucking cool to listen to. Like, it was, it was like, exciting. Plus, it's got this great beat to it. Like, dun, 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 dun. I can't do it fully great, but it's got that little guitar note. It fucking sounds proper. It's called a harpsichord. And uh, <laughs> is it? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I don't know. Everything about this was pretty cool. I gave it another 4.5. I really enjoy listening to this. Um, yeah. I mean, this one was, like, very creative. Um, there's, like, kind of, like, starts off with, like, yelling in Spanish. And obviously, like you said, we don't speak Spanish. We speak French. Um, so, um, yeah. So we don't know what the, what they were saying. Um, and I wanted to, like, definitely note on the, the use of, like, the harpsichord Um it's had, had had like that like old school. I know old school is usually like uses like something like this century, um, but I like the baroque feeling to it because that's usually like the like one of like the popular instruments in like the baroque period. Okay. Um, and I like that. It definitely like kind of brought me back to like that kind of feeling. Um, you know, and they're you know usually like if you know anything about like you know kind of like the french baroque period like there was like it's kind of like high society and so it was kind of weird like getting like this kind of mixed into this song um so was, so this song is basically more about them being in a war and them being like soldiers and like also kind of like i think he's obviously like relating to his world in like the hood and like kind of what's going on there but i think it's also relating back to you know different things and, he's, and he talks about that he's dreaming about the wars and like the holocaust and everything else and again we get like spanish kind of yelling at the end um so i mean i gave this song a 3.75 but uh but like i mean i i i, I do it in the best way <laughs> um i really like how creative it is and like i said i really like the instrument and like that kind of feeling that it gives you um i like the spanish parts even though i couldn't understand it i definitely get like what you were saying in the previous song about it feeling like very authentic and i feel like this song is very authentic um yeah and i just think you know it just makes me think that it, since it's like a cycle realm um war is pretty crazy and like like you know, it's kind of like the the actions that are mentioned in a song make uh, make it pretty pretty crazy. So, I mean, I liked it. I, I really liked the creativity of the song, but it just wasn't like, really like my kind of vibe. So that's why I gave it a little bit of a lower mark. But it was cool. That's good, good effort. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is an interlude slash stone garden followed by another interlude. How do you feel about this beautiful masterpiece of a fucking song? Um, I mean, it was pretty cool. And again, we kind of like get like the kind of classical kind of like instrument and like feeling, um, you know, there's sort of like a symphony type sounds um, in this one. But it sounds again more kind of classical. Um, so they're kind of like going through like the different styles of like music from like back in the day. Um, and then again, it kind of goes into like a song. Um and like it has like that video game kind of like sound, which I've heard in another song, and I can't figure out which song it was. Um, do you know which one I'm talking about? No, no. There, there was another song that we did for you know, 
won many of our reviews or lyrical breakdowns that had that sound that sound in it. So one song had a random <laughs> yes, video but it game stood sound. out because I was like that would obviously that stands out. Anyways, um, what's the sound? That like from like uh, Mario. I don't. I didn't notice it. Um. Uh, anyways, yeah. So. Um, if you guys know another song that has that featured in it, <laughs> let us know down below. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of a morbid song and everybody dies, basically. Um, and some go go out in different ways than others. And it's just kind of talking about like, you know, everyone's like kind of death experience um, and what they they see. And then um, you kill his buddy and then he'll kill you. And then there's sort of like, again, that never ending back and forth. It's just going to keep going. And like, that's kind of like the the reality. And um, it ends kind of like with because it goes back to like an interlude sort of. So it ends kind of with like wind chimes and um, the piano. So, again, it kind of goes back to that kind of classical feeling, which I find is really interesting that they're, that they're using that. And it's very nice. Um, it was good and honest. And I like that they play a lot, like I said, with like different like genres of music and times. So I gave it a four on five for this one. That's fair. Um, the... The interludes do such an interesting job, right? Because that first one is kind of more ominous or whatever, but that second one is almost peaceful and really happy almost. It's like it's like relaxing and like meditative. meditative. And it's like it helps you, right, kind of transition. And I feel like this album is almost divided into a series of different chunks and chapters to kind of describe a different feeling. So we phased out of the first patch, which was kind of introducing you to the psycho-crazy realm. Uh, and a little bit of why they are like that. And now we're exploring death in a really more direct way on the impact of it. Like this song, to me, was like kind of acknowledging death as a constant reality and having to come to terms with that and come to peace with the fact. Like a stone garden is like a, a cemetery, all of the tombstones and shit. It's like a stone garden, and it's like an interesting piece of imagery. And all the lines just kind of have this like heaviness to it in this song. Like there's no... It almost doesn't sound like they're trying to, like, be grandiose or over the top with it. They're just dealing with a lot of shit, and they're trying to, like, express that pain, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, sounds like gods are crying tears of Maliathon. That's a sick jacket. Raining over your head to put the fire out. Who desires to die besides the suicidal? Tendencies can lead to the eternal sleep, so keep your eyes wide, open, and alive. Grab your snake and ride to the other side. And it's just, like... He's like, nobody really wants to die. Well, I mean, there's the suicidal, but, like, I mean, at this point in time, you, that's just crazy people, right? Mm -hmm. It's 97. Um, it's psycho. Yeah, but, like, otherwise, it's like you feel like you have to sleep with your eyes open and you constantly have to watch your behavior because any kind of mistake or error can end with your life ending and the situation is really dire and really stressful, you know? If yeah. your intention is to defy death, I'll tell you how even the best get laid to rest. We're on our way to the stone garden. And again, that reality that you could be the best, the worst, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter how successful, that death is just waiting for everyone is, is a heavy thought, no matter who you are or what circumstance you're in, you know? Uh, it's just, it just kind of like, it ends with like we're on another plane of thought thinking immortal but the path we're on leads us straight to the portal so this is like that i guess live fast die young mentality you know like mgk just released a project and like the last song is just live fast die young i don't forgive a fuck etc and i feel like the way that he puts it here where it's like you're thinking a certain way you can do whatever you want you're immortal you can you can survive any kind of crazy situation because you have so far but that kind of recklessness with your life inevitably is going to lead to a, a deathful situ a death situation, you know? Mm -hmm. And Big Duke kind of paints it out again with this powerful, slower tone. Like, did you get slain or fall victim to bald knuckleheads on bald dame? It uh, ends the same. Every motherfucker right here got to jump a soul train. You know, some go up, some go south. Some get stuck in a realm with no way out. So I guess they're a little Catholic there. And uh, no matter how you die, whether it's by some violent death or some accident or whatever, you end up either going to heaven, hell, or purgatory, because I guess they're Catholic. And, like, it's just got this, again, other different conditions. Like, some get to ride, OD on drug hits, dying in your sleep. Now, that's the shit. That's a great line, because I'm not going to lie. If I die, I want to die in my fucking sleep in the most painless fucking way possible. Yeah. I don't want no... Well, I think that's everyone, you know, they just want to go in, like, a relaxing kind of way where like they don't feel pain i think I that's what most people want 
I think a lot of people want that. Some people don't. Um, I guess. I don't know. It's it's really crazy. And then uh, Be Real does the third verse. And it's the same kind of stuff. Like, in the stone garden, we keep all the heavenly gates packed with fresh souls under control and no holding back. Look at all these names engraved in the stones. Even the unknown finds his path on his way home. And it's just like, wow. All you see is this, like, bunch of names on stones and even all these unknown people. At the end of the day, they all ended up here. No matter who you are, whether you're famous, whether you're a homeless person, you're going to end up in the ground, in these cemeteries, in these moments like this. And it's just surreally real, you know, like it just has this heaviness to it and this weight. It just feels like this really powerful cinematic experience, almost like like you're really walking and like almost every song elicits a music video in your mind. And I really enjoyed this one as a 4.75. I thought it was really amazing. I mean, I could deal without the interludes every time, and sometimes I just want to get to the song. But in general, the song kind of needs to have those interludes encompassing it to make it work. It's really great. Um, All right, well, let's check out Temporary Insanity. Into the eyes of a madman on the verge of insanity, looking out the window. How do you feel about Temporary Insanity? Um, I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, it, <laughs> they're uh, basically just kind of like talking about like the destruction and the craziness and like what goes on. Um, and it's just sort of like looking into like the eyes of a madman. I think that's kind of what he talks about as well. Um, for me, like this one, like didn't leave me with like anything very much. Um, I wasn't like a big fan of this one. I don't really have very much to say about this one even. Um, you know, I think there's still like sort of like that piano featured at the beginning, so I kind of like that, and then it kind of continues on with like the classical feeling. Um, but I don't really have much else to say on this one. I gave it a three point five. That's fair. I like this one a lot more than that. I feel like this <laughs> song kind of takes a look into the psyche of people in harsh environments. It kind of takes almost like a a standoffish, scientific ish kind of like. Let's take a look at how somebody could end up. Like, it almost reminded me a bit of uh, the You Can't Understand How I Could Just Kill a Man song mm -hmm. from, like, kind of that tone. Um, but just be real, has that, like, like his voice sometimes sounds like a gun going off in terms of how, like, his flow kind of just hits it. I don't know how else to, I don't know how to really put it, but, like, it just feels sh sharp and hard hitting. Like, he's just vicious in the way he says words. Hmm. Kind of like Zach de la Rocha. I can see how uh, Be Real ended up in Prophets of Rage. Uh, you better dig deep and find your soul because you're lost. You need guidance of which way to go. People are despicable, unpredictable spirits calling out so all weak-minded hear it. And I feel like it's a bit of a caution to the, let's say, the, your average person who maybe isn't strong with their convictions and a warning that if you look around, you're going to see all of the worst types of people trying to get their little bite out of a situation. Um, and you need to be careful about that. And... You know, to take control of your mind and body. Hip hop is more than a flow in a party. Strike down the ungodly, unoriginal hypocrites. Let them burn at the stakes like chicken strips. And here it's kind of like pointing out maybe to the rappers or to the, the messages and branding pointing out that hip hop is more than just this pop shit that we're being exposed to. It's got this realness to it. It's about the fight. It's about the message. It's about, the you know, all of those real essences of what it's supposed to be. And then he just kind of like puts it out in such an interesting perspective and then that hook what do you see when you're looking into the eyes of a madman on the verge of insanity looking out the window i see the animals in the darkness the fearless the scandalous the heartless and you just got the sense that be real's mind's about to snap because of this environment or this world and he's looking out the window and all he sees is the worst of the fucking darkest people ever, the killers, the snakes, the people trying to take advantage of him. But also, like, you can also picture, like, record label executives and white-collar marketing criminal types, too. Like, he doesn't just, to me, limit it to the hood. He just sees the dark side of everything, you know? Yeah. And then uh, Slick Jacking comes and, like, Rome bare chests, women with bare breasts, you know, kind of maybe painting this barbaric backwaters world where, like, people don't even have clothes and shit. With yeah, uh, hollow follow the sun god Apollo wake up tomorrow with yellow eyes seeing visions of explicit visits to the other side with precision. So it's almost like they're passing through and seeing kind of cryptic paranormal experiences of the other side, etc. Um, I don't know. It's like it really kind of goes 
through and he continues on with this imagery and it's really fucking fun to listen to um pop the top of the painkillers on the top shelf i need to maintain my mental health but overall i do what it takes to get my shoe in the door living with the score suffering from function war from two characters behaving like bad actors i mean it really adds a lot of context to like how somebody can end up getting like hooked on painkillers. Like, can you imagine the situation where it, it like it is as dark as they've been painting throughout all these tracks, and now you're sitting there, you're on the verge of breaking, and you're trying to just do whatever you can to cope, and it's fucking powerful, you know. Big Duke comes through and does the third verse, and he sounds really good. I mean. I don't really know that there's a lot that's super substantial there for me to comment on. He does mention some police and stuff, but it's totally just in suit with, like, the entire rest of it. Um, what if one night you just come home beating on a wicked drum? I'm going through a quick view of what I thought was my mom being torn apart. Like, it's just this – you get this serious level of fear and interesting emotions, and I really fucking like it. I really enjoyed this song. I gave it a four and a half on five. It, to me, is – like we're six tracks in and pretty much all of them have been really enjoyable for me to listen to. Um, they're very similar in lyrical style and sound. So I, I do feel like if anything, there's a bit of homogeny happening on the album in terms of style. But on the other hand, I haven't heard anything else like this really. So it comes out working really well for when I'm in the mood to bump this project. And that's really cool. But let's move on to Confessions of a Drug Addict. Slash doors intro. So I got a pocket, put it up on my head and get the dough, cut the needle as my god and smack. Do you like the doors intro, Bunny? Yes. Tell me about it. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I got pretty, well, again, not really sure that it's obvious to you, but it's obvious to me that I was pretty excited when I saw the doors intro and was like, are they, are they talking about the doors? So in the, in the morning, <laughs> when she's waking up and getting ready, and yeah. it's Monday morning, and you got work and shit. Yep. She puts on the heroin music of Jim Morrison. <laughs> and I, I, say I listen that. to. I put on my my album of like the Doors every morning, pretty much, and get ready. And it's like and it's gloomy, interesting great. music. Uh, great. Anyway, so <laughs> she really likes them. Um. So yeah, I mean, I got obviously I was pretty excited about that. Um. And it was obviously like a clip from like the the movie The Doors that came out in '91. Great movie. You know, we kind of get to know Jim Morrison with uh, Val Kilmer. Um, so there's like a lot to listen to in this song. I found like there was just like, like my, my ears had to listen to like so much, um, I guess there was, cause there was like so much going on and different voices and like different like feelings and stuff like that kind of throughout the song. Um, so basically just sort of like the power and control that drug has over you. And I think that that's kind of like what they wanted to like feel in this song. Um, so this was like, a, for me, like this was an all right song because it was like weird, but you kind of expected, kind of expected it to be like that because of like, you know, they're obviously trying to go back to like the feeling of like the doors and like, you know, basically when you listen to the doors, you just can like, you can kind of get the acid trip or the heroin trip or whatever that they were on kind of like just from like the feeling. And I think that that's what they were trying to like, you know, kind of pass on to you. But I give this one a 3.75 actually. <laughs> So, yeah. Maybe I wasn't feeling it when I was, like, <laughs> like giving, like, all these grades. I don't know. Um, I gave this a five. All right. This song is amazing. So it starts off with that context setter of, like, I'm in pain, man. I feel the universe functioning perfectly, you know. Just, Jim Morrison, what a guy. Uh, this darkness, you know. Um, and what type of drugs do you do? And what do you do to get your hands on your shit, motherfucker, huh? You know, it just kind of has this, like, questioning tone and pointing out that like when you are an addict and whatever your drug is you're gonna what kind of things like what depths are you willing to go to acquire your substance or your activity as we find out right and, like it kind of has this questioning kind of like pointing out like really think about addiction really think about it. and i think they're maybe not really i think they're both trying to point out like the danger of an addict's like willingness to do anything but not necessarily shame people. Again, just kind of bring some attention to it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I love how Big Duke's verse starts with women. Like, that is the first habit that you're addicted to. It isn't actually drugs. The first drug is, is actually the women that you're, you're sleeping with, etc. <laughs> so you get hooked to the look of wild women. I want to live in the land of the unforgiven. You know, habits turn bad once individuals make and poison rituals. Got to have it. A habit. Welcome to your choices of an addict. 
And I think it's really amazing how they approach it in a more granular sense. An easy choice might have been crack or some other actual drug, but I think the point they're trying to make is is that addiction is is super big and it can be encompassing of anything. I mean, nowadays it's maybe a little more accepted, but I don't know how widespread the understanding of it was in 97. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then God forgave me for my bad habits. This is be real in verse two. Drug addict, needle up my vein. I got to have it to kill your pain, you silly rabbit. Dig a hole under the sun to hide from the static. Automatic pressure, got to kill it. Give some act right juice so I could feel it. <sighs> Everything is all right. The eye of the needle cries into the dark side. Okay, they immediately move into heroin and shit. So they really push down the power of it, like it paints the picture from the perspective of the addict just kind of describing the rush and the, the cravings of what happens and the desire like it almost sounds like a lustful attraction to a needle piercing our skin and giving you this this uh substance youtube's gonna not let us monetize this video i think <laughs> um i really liked it um sick jacking comes in and just kind of continues it um you know it's more drug intrusions uh more I, more like of a psychedelic drug is kind of what I feel he's on. Like yeah. paraphernalia, my domain brings conclusion that I'm using. But the question is, am I abusing, infested in the presence of a Pico Union drug intrusion, and color fusion? I, maybe more like pot or something like that. Um, Sick Jacking comes in and again for the fourth verse. And it's kind of like his mind's cloudy. Things are kind of like drastics. Uh, maybe pointing into more stuff like you know, methamphetamines, uh, aphrodisiacs, you know, just kind of like almost looking like how you can kind of get anything and you just have this, um, like it can escalate to becoming addicted to virtually anything and multiple types of substances for different purposes. And I know a lot of people who create drug cocktails where they start the night off with this thing and they move on to that thing. And by then they take them like seven things to like regulate and control their high and I really like this song. I really think it goes through. There's a couple more verses. Each of them, I think, gets two. Um, I think Be Real is kind of interesting because reputation appears to be what he's pointing at as his addiction and his drug. So it's not even just women or whatever. It's like your own ego, how people treat you, your social status and standing, uh, all of this stuff really like, really like can lead you down this dark path of desperation of poor choices and all sorts of other things basically i think this song hits really home from an addict like addiction point of view like it really understands it it really looks at the topic in a in a really cool way and each of them brings their own like twist to it over this powerful beat and like i give it a five it it really really is the best song i think i've heard on the project so far it's really amazing to me cool um Anyway, we can move on and talk about bullets. There's the Who Are You interlude first, mm -hmm. which has like a Who Are You, You Are You kind of like playing in the background <laughs> of it, like flowing on through. And then there's some talking that can be heard in the background. I think it's Be Real, maybe musing to himself. Okay. I'm not 100% sure which one. And then you hear, I don't need no pigs in my pad right now. You know what I mean? As like the song starts to pick up. Um, and I really feel like this one is a little more directly approaching the issues of like violence yeah. and bullets and, you know, the, the various, that was a lazy word to use, but, um, be real starts it out with lost dreams of innocence long past through time. Memories burn and fade like ash in the crosswinds through the crosshairs with the bullet strike, the Teflon and on and on and in feel me penetrate the skin so I could travel, unravel the hole in your shelf. I'm going to send you straight to hell. Now you're lifeless. You know, like, it almost takes on the perspective of the bullet traveling through and just breaking through the, the bulletproof vest and, and killing this person and making them lifeless. I know. I'm like, I really like the tone of it and how it comes in, like, really kind of after that, like, intro, which was kind of, I would say, nuanced to, like, this neutrality. And then it just comes in with this intensity that kind of, like, it was like a, a palate cleanser to move into, like, a, more, a different topic, like the last one was about drug addicts and shit. Now we're going to go right back into violence and other problems in the community. And it's like yeah. they're taking the opportunity to bring you through a, another more specific issue that they're dealing with. Um, uh, Sick Jacking kind of has a little bit more. Gang in Sydney I splits your family. I let me break it down, Mira. You're slaying motherfuckers that look like you do. Dying off slowly is the only rule. I'm like, you get like the sense that 
they're looking around and seeing the violence against their own community perpetuated by their own people and they're confused by this situation and kind of um, calling it them on it a little bit, you know, pointing out how the government used these tactics by putting guns around the people and creating the context of it. But most of you blasted all you fanatics over so cheese G's and cease dramatics. And we've seen this a little bit earlier on the album where they question like why people are, are pulling their guns out and killing in this environment. They're not necessarily doing it for proper reasons other than brainwashing tactics of maybe hip hop culture or the fact that there's liquor stores and guns around that are put there to encourage access to this uh, violence inside of these neighborhoods. And I don't want to like come off like I've seen it firsthand. I live in Canada, but I have heard countless tales now that all seem to break out the same way and you look at the papers describing the environment and this one seems to really like be coming in with like a like they're not happy with the so much violence that's going on and they want to see some kind of change so they're drawing attention to the real specifics in it you know yeah in this chapter we're going to define why rivals die bullets fly they fill skies and we die faster than we multiply and if you got to consider at a point, if none of the men are living past 25 in certain neighborhoods and shit, then you really are going to have a point where you are losing people quicker than you're actually bridging the gap. And like, yep. it's tragic. Like, it's really like when you then look at stuff like the murder rates in modern Chicago and things like that, it's like your heart breaks trying to like wrap your head around just how it can and exist in a first world country, so to speak. Um, and then, yeah, basically, Sick Jacking follows through and kind of continues to paint the picture of the gang on gang violence and how people just kind of get taken out. And in general, how bullets just get used to kill people. Be real, that's another verse. And it, it really, without like going through every line, it really just kind of takes these isolated, context specific situations where you might see bullets flying in the dam. Uh, we might see this kind of gun violence taking place and it it's this gritty reality and each other like the rapping is very consistent between the various tracks i would say that if you've heard them on one or two songs they kind of do the same thing on each song but it's fine because they manage to use the right words to paint these super vivid pictures and yeah i really enjoyed this one i gave it a 4.5 i thought it was good really really like makes you feel like you really kind of at this point are are caught up almost you're almost anxious yourself because of all of the the reality of their words yeah that was so poorly said <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i mean i basically you know it's obviously pretty similar um so just kind of like what bullets do to people and how they divide people and how they create wars and like but they can also kind of like destroy gangs, which is, you know, positive in one way, but you shouldn't have to like kill them to get rid of them. Um, and it's just sort of like rival um, rivals are shooting guns at you. And like it, there's just it just doesn't seem like a very safe place. Um, and then he also kind of mentions like the police and like how they end up killing people or several people sometimes as well. Um, and about how there's drive-bys and like just like the ease and like how much trouble it can cause and like the, the repercussions that basically happen after like, you know, someone being killed or like someone shooting bullets at someone. Um, so, I mean, it, it was a very good message in the song. It was like a really interesting point of view. Um, I gave this one a four on five. That's cool. Uh, we can move on then to Love from the Six Side. All right. Chilling at the clubs, your friends and my friends. Hanging out all night, dropping the How do you feel about this love song? This sweet and romantic tale of. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, this one starts off with a quote from uh, the 90s film Blue Velvet, um, which I remember watching just because maybe it was like on TV or something, but I remember watching it like specifically being like, oh, I remember hearing about this. And I remember it being pretty weird from, you know, everything that I can recall about it um, and like pretty like. Just a weird kind of movie. Um, so basically, um, doing any anything for love, like even killing, and like love has hurt him a lot, and now he kind of um, he no longer loves because nobody lasts, and like it's kind of like his like sad reality that nobody like sticks around, or maybe 
um, you know, ends up not getting shot or different like reasons why, you know, like the, the love isn't there. And like, that's why it's like a dark side or like, you know, maybe they're on drugs or whatever, like they just don't stick around. And um, I mean, that's what it is. Um, so for me, like overall, like this one was like an okay song. It wasn't another one that like, I don't know, for me, like none of these songs seem to be like, like on top, but um, I mean, it was good. It was okay. I gave it another 3.75. Now, unless I'm crazy, Be Real and Big Duke are talking about the same lady here. Oh, maybe. And Be Real is the, is the word, love is the word I'm thinking of. Sometimes I sit back and try to figure out how it can break the strongest man down to his very last compound. You know, so he is heartbroken and feeling destroyed and stuff. And he's kind of describing how... <laughs> He uh, fell in love with a woman, and she didn't necessarily care. He tried to give up everything and change and do all the right things. She didn't give a fuck, and she decided to get up and do whatever. So then he just kind of flips, and he's like, fuck all the good times. Just remember the bad. Fuck me, and fuck all the love we used to have. You know, It's a little bit emo, if that's a good word for yeah. it. But I really enjoyed it. It was really fun because it was such honest, you know, such honest expression of, like, frustration and stuff fucking off to the ends but i can't pretend not to feel the pain inside suicide crossed my mind every time i heard your name but i got strong and realized it's all about game and now you're just all the same so in a sense he realized women are all a bit of the whole variety and became a little bit jaded and maybe went a, a little bit more mob on this situation than he was <laughs> previously but then big duke simultaneously is like fuck love i just can't get enough of your freaky ass sassy motherfucker when you walk by i want to go for a ride you hit like drugs or whatever. So he's like, hey, come over, you know, I'm going to come on through. I got all the fancy things. Forget about your man. Um, and basically points out that he does have it. Probably the puta that says she loves me, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the sense that this girl went and left him for this flyer, more drug dealer, swaggy type guy. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of how it's, that's why it's like a twisted love tale because he doesn't love her and he got this girl and whatever i thought it was a little bit fun to listen to um but it was definitely kind of like like as much as it's a twisted love song and still a kind of, i'm not the hugest fan of love songs so i give it a 4.25 it's well done but it's kind of like it just feels weird like maybe they just threw in something a little silly because of all the serious conversations like gun violence and fucking drugs yeah that's fair Anyway, let's move on to the art you experience slash the outro, but not the album outro. Of the outro, it's like this medieval kind of twisted. I know there's a whole song before, but let's talk about the outro. And it's just this guy ranting, kind of like you almost picture like a king sitting there listening to this guy like plead his case of a situation. But he's pleading the case almost for like the realm of everything. Like I, I didn't catch all the lyrics. I listened to like four or five times. I was so caught up in the theatrics of it. But the general sense I got is he's trying to make like almost a case for the people here. And then at the end, the powers that be don't even want to hear it and just like off with his head and whatever. And it's just fucking – it's so – imaginative and cool and like it was so distracting that it made me have a little bit more trouble focusing on the rest of the track i'll be completely honest <laughs> with you um but apparently there are hidden messages in the song oh really yeah um hang on i have i didn't necessarily how about i go look into that a little bit quicker here while you talk about how you feel about it sure um so i mean this is basically kind of like a crazy song and it seems to be about a lot of different things um it kind of talks about like the politicians the jail sentences war disease uh soldiers races and so there's kind of like a lot of different you know topics that are talked about um and I, I did find it because of that, like, I did find it a little bit difficult to kind of follow along with. Like, maybe, like, that's kind of, like, the similar experience that you were having. Um, it's very interesting. And, like I said, there's lots of discover in it. Um, and the second half of the song sounds kind of like you were saying medieval. I was saying Shakespearean. Um, so, I mean, they were both around the same time. They were both from the medieval ages. Um, and there's um, – so it definitely kind of has that kind of, again, really old – kind of classical kind of sound to it with like the words on top of it. And I thought that was, again, like very creative. Like I definitely have to say, like, I may not be a big fan of like their lyrics and stuff like that, but like the things that they do in their music, it's very creative. And I like that. 
Um, so I gave this one a four on five. I thought it was interesting, pretty cool. So yeah, basically if you take the first letter of each word in each verse uh, and string them out together, in Be Real's verse, you get the new order is in full effect. Protect yourself at any cost, no matter what victory will be ours. Fight to the death. Sick Jackin's verse has fought with silent weapons and subliminal codes that can take complete control over the world. Big Duke has build and organize your street armies. Prepare to take action against abusive authorities. And in the chorus, wartime experiences. But um, some uh, one of the letters is an X that's not supposed to be. And I thought that was really cool that they would like do that. And then if you really look at hmm. Be Real's verse, through hallucinations, escape the now every wicked ordeal. So now N E W ordeal regenerates disgrace, emotions, ruin, order. And then if you really look at the first letter of each of those words, it actually does spell out those sentences, which really makes this really fucking cool. Because the verse is kind of. I wonder of, if they just wrote out the letters and they were like, fill in the blanks. Yeah, eh? <laughs> and uh, then you have like, because like the tone of the track really does play into the subjects of those hidden things. It's like this paranoid environment, like emotions, intellectual seduced, including nations. I love that line, intellectual seduced, including nations. If you look at the world we're in now, some of the dumbest people are the smartest people because they get seduced into like chasing the rabbit tails of whatever. Like, I mean, just got to go into YouTube comments to see how people are. Um, Attention to all our nation's youth. Continue our struggle. Trust no one. Maintain and tell the truth. It's very reminiscent of like any kind of other counterculture. Like, listen, pay attention to what's real. Stay woke before staying woke was woke because yeah. they were spitting some real stuff in there even before it was cool. And I really appreciate like the whole tone of this. Sick Jackin also has a very powerful uh, verse. Fighting original underground generals. Hit their weakest intervals. 200 sentinels. Infiltrate levels. Effectively not taking warning except automatic preparation override negative systems and new democracy secretly under battle lost inside mystery fuck it just sounds like revolution it sounds like struggle resistance like you just get this sense that on top of that the language used is crazy like yeah. th they have a very diverse vocabulary and are able to keep it really spiced up and interesting with the way that they rhyme um this song is fucking incredible i gave it a four and a half on five i find the beat a little bit annoying for the song after a while like it, it it's not bad but it's definitely not my favorite so that outro is incredible but like for the actual song part the beat is kind of it kind of repeats the same couple of notes over and over again for like the whole thing yeah um but i do enjoy it a lot anyway uh let's move on past the outro to the <laughs> remaining part of the album cyclones the serpent fucking with me in the turbulent times of wars on the street Yo, this one is pretty fucking incredible. Like, it almost feels like the last song kind of ends and we've we've had this whole, like, context building of the world and the consequence and these warnings. And, like, the last song is almost like this call to arms that, yeah. like, it's time for some shit. And then you have that, like, medieval skit where the powers that be just didn't seem to take what was being said seriously so now you have the explosive rage of the youth and the power running through and the cyclones have been unleashed to cause havoc and like shit's about to get real it's almost like a call for like a civil war of some sorts or yeah. and i really i really Band together i don't know i really like it like i mean from a rapping perspective and a lines perspective it's a lot of the similar kind of language and tone being used like couldn't believe your eyes when you see what the fuck is coming cyclones all you sorry motherfuckers is running this is be real uh the city has turned to renegades with guns and blades and criminals seeking to get paid i maintain keep cool headed in the face of destruction whether i live or die i'm like you it's just it's again painting this reality of like the consequence of where society is heading it's like they're projecting into the future and they're trying to give this this almost biblical warning of what will happen if things don't change if things don't improve and stuff yeah and it's really powerful it's really like the flows are ridiculous i feel like everyone stepped their game up on this track honestly uh big duke on the hook even though we don't know the attacks exact origin man-made diseases show traces of an assassin the government went deranged and came blasting trying to finish us off with poison rations and so it's just showing like we don't really know what happened how it all started etc here's a lot of things that went on but at the end of the day it's us versus them. The government is trying to get us through these different means to try to keep us down, to control us. 
and then uh, Sick Jack and a big dude kind of bring their verses in, kind of painting more of this picture of crazy folks and conflict and, and just a different, almost realistic things that could be happening in the future as if they were almost science fiction writers with a good understanding of history. And it's really cool. Uh, it goes on and like, they end up all having a lot of little verses at the end of it. Um, I really like when Big Duke's like, the day you feel what I feel, life in the battlefield, facing fucking steel and no shield, puppet governments on the streets to confiscate CB's batteries and MCs. And it's just like, I can relate to a lot of that, but I imagine depending on where you come from in the world and what your background is, these are actual realities that you might be facing or you might have to actually deal with. And just... It makes you want to go research, it makes me at least want to go look up more into this stuff. Like these guys have a really good understanding of the various conspiracy theories that are involving stuff. Um, I don't know. It's it's really good. Like invasion of your spaces calls for rowdy occasion. Deliberate attacks on your stacks means retaliation. Can you succeed in leaving the other side bleeding? Can you succeed in leaving the other side bleeding? Or will they defeat my street fleet? Can you succeed in leaving the other side bleeding? At the end of the day, it's just like this is what it has to come down to, this war, this desperation. And at the, are you actually able to pull it off at the end of the day or are you going to get taken out? But at the end of the day, this is what you have to do. You have to make them bleed. You have to make them hurt. Are you able to, when the time comes, do what needs to be done or are you going to get like sucked into it? Uh, this is maybe the type of pressure they put on themselves or they feel within themselves. But I love this song. I thought it was one of the best ones on this project. It was really great. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really like this one. I mean, because there were like animal slash like nature sounds in it. So like right away I was like all about that because I love listening to like that sometimes just to like relax. Um, and, um, you know, and then that's like kind of like at the beginning and then kind of again throughout um, the whole song. So that was cool. Um, so everyone's crazy and like the devil's always around. So it causes like all these kind of like bad things to happen and people to be kind of pulled by like this kind of like devil, devil on the shoulders kind of situation. Um, so I thought that was like pretty interesting. Um, I don't really have too, too much else to say about this one. I, you know, again, I just wanted to say that I like the, the nature sounds. Um, and it was, it was an okay song. I liked it. So I gave it a four on five. Okay, so why don't we talk about some lost cities? Alrighty. I can replace my home with peaceful silence, but my roots are planted in the city of violence. How do you feel about this one? Um, so this one is kind of like they start off and they say that they are sort of they prefer to destroy um, rather than to do better. They like to just do that. So there's kind of like violence and crime everywhere. Um, and cities get destroyed, obviously, when um, violence is like constantly happening and, you know, there are drugs and the citizens move and they die or they go to the jail, um, you know, and and the people are victims and, of of all of this. And, you know, they end up falling into like this same sort of like cycle. They get, you know, involved in crimes and drugs or, you know, end up getting killed or, you know, go to jail. And then so it just sort of like keeps going. And that's why like <clears throat> these like areas and like where like this is happening, it kind of it does get destroyed and, you know, cities become lost. And um, so I think it's good. I like this song a lot. Um, kind of just saying that like this can happen um, anywhere, um, but they also kind of mention like especially like it can happen wherever races are divided or people are divided. And I think that that's kind of like, you know, or classes or wherever there's like a huge like issue issue between things like that and or where everyone's kind of going through the same thing. But there's still like that division when everybody should just be like working together to get like the issues that everyone's facing solved. So I think that that's like um, uh, a good good song. Um, I like this one. I gave it a four on five. Yeah, it starts off with Revelation 6, 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse in his name that sat upon him was death and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill the sword and with hunger and with the beast of the earth. And so if we think about a lot of the themes described on this album, and I believe that it's meant deliberately to take you through this journey of exploring different angles of what would make somebody snap in this psycho realm, in this dark environment, the types of shit. And then you get to the end where it's this message of how cities can fall and how this type of almost cancerous mentality can like take a good area and destroy it. And then the next thing you know, 
you have a lot of like the stuff we've seen on this album i mean i don't know that anything new gets brought up here i feel like it's more like a conclusive point right like it's trying to point out that the gang retaliation the violence the anxiety the fear the crime the systematic situation that exists destroys cities and creates these patches or these areas where it almost feels like it's just lost um i really enjoyed this one as well i gave it a four and a half on five um I like the end, though. Look around. It's in your town. Deadly sirens brings on violence. Take heed to its warming. Bad time storing. War between city blocks and cops. What's going on in uh, the last couple of years? All over. Yep. All over. Even Montreal. That's where I live. It's happened here. Stories. I know somebody who had a situation with the police go on and went to court and all that shit and some fuck that didn't die, but still got her arm broken. And, like, yeah, it's just... I'm truly impressed by the almost prophetic nature of how they're able to spin this stuff because depending on where you ended up, this album came true in your neighborhood, especially if you were in a place where like a big factory closed down or a Walmart came in and ruined your community or something like that happened. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, the last two on this album are kind of connected together and are truly truly something interesting i keep using that word and i hate it but this really is with la concerta intro and la, or sorry la connecta intro and la connecta part one um this is fucking interesting so the intro takes its time to introduce us to three individuals with three different motivations and it kind of feels like uh, one of those Spanish soap operas and the premise of like starting up and super. The three amigos. <laughs> yeah, but like, I guess. Basically, that's what they are, right? No, but no, they're not. They're These guys are enemies. Well, this is no, more of like, like the band. Yeah, but in this in this like little story they're creating, they're, they're painting this like dramatic tale of three guys and how they all come to a head with different motivations, you know. One is uh, greed, one is power, and the third is bare ambition. And it's really corny, but it's really amazing. And then uh, we get introduced to Be Real's character, who, uh, fuck, he has a, is Sonny, and he's just tired of, you know, the fucking guys up top taking all the money, and he wants to become the top dog of the mob, and so he plots out how he's going to, like, fucking murder the the main guy and take over and be in charge and shit then uh yakin who is sick jackin uh comes in and he gets uh assigned the job of killing sunny and so he kind of introduces himself like on the battles rattan man main man gato and when he goes out i'm taking over the scam and so he's also kind of interested in the boss dying because he's already in the number two spot. But Sonny has now who he's got to go take out. So he's kind of put in a situation where they now have a little bit of conflict. And if I mess up a bit on the story, I'm sorry. It's a little bit hard to follow what happens at the end and stuff. Um, and then we move on to Gustavo or Gus. Uh, and he gets like shot and sacrificed i really don't understand how all of a sudden like big duke's character just seems to be like arrested or hurt or he was a scapegoat or something and he was just kind of tossed to the wind etc and like it's got all these cut scenes that really like add the add to the story and make it like feel like a movie's playing out each of them gets a little bit of a verse and then it just has like a scene at the end that's kind of like painting like there's a showdown coming we're about to go get the guy kind of thing and then it cuts into the next song and i was like this is pretty good i'm not gonna lie this is like fucking one of the most entertaining songs i've heard i can't say like from like a song song it's like the greatest thing ever but from a story movie like song thing it's one of the best i ever heard and i gave it a five it's so fucking oh, wow. cool it, to be fair it's hard to talk about this one alone because it's completely related to my feelings about the next one yes. spoiler alert true um so i mean this one obviously sounds like a kind of a latin story about three guys and like you know their kind of issues and they, we hear them like snorting coke um and like you know he's kind of talking one of them's talking about like wanting to like run his like own shit and doing whatever he wants and make all the money um and risk is obviously like a big um factor in like and you know doing anything that's criminal 
Um, and then, you know, he kind of knows like you'll have to kill like the second in command if you want to move up. And so like the whole thing, it basically sounds like a movie. It's um, it's good. And so they're kind of just talking about like how they, they gave their lives to crime. Um, you know, Sonny's in trouble. We've got the promises from the boss man and like, you know, some issues going on there. Um, I thought it was a good story, good song. I give it a 4.25. That's cool. Let's move on and talk about La Conecta to slash Going in Circles outro. All right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, then we kind of come back in and we have a big shout out on this track. They, they do a setup. Everything's going to happen at 7.30 tonight. Mm -hmm. They each do their uh, verses and then Big Duke shows up at the end like, yeah, why did I have to get shout out? And then it's like a three-way kind of shootout. That happens, and then it kind of sounds like the cops show up, and everybody kind of is dying or escaping. And honestly, yep. that like really amazing going in circles song thing that's like that's playing over the shootout scene is again one of the greatest parts on this album. I mean, <laughs> so like the story plays out, and it's not like the rhyming particularly is anything interesting, but it really has like honest sounding banter. Like each of these guys have adopted their character and they're like spitting it out and telling the motive. Like in the first song, we understood what everybody's trying to get out of the situation. And then number two, they all get this conflict and they all meet up together and they all have their little shootout and everything happens. And, you know, you really feel like it's sunny versus the next guy versus the next guy. And it's such a cool, like climactic point. And then it just fades into like the most beautiful, soft sounding, not meant for this moment <laughs> song. Yep. And I think they're trying to point out the beauty of this situation in a sense, you know, in their psycho world. And it's just such a great ending and it just like fades out and it's not very clear who wins or who loses. And if you guys do know, because it was clear to you, let me know in the comments, please. But I loved it. I love this little two parter here. It's a five on five to me. It is an excellent little experience. I think like just these two songs alone, even if you don't like the rest of the album and it's not your cup of tea, you got to hear these two. They're so interesting. Like I know again, it's a lame thing to tell you something's interesting, but like, <laughs> This is rarely interesting, in my opinion. You don't hear this type of song put together that often, at least in the pop world. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I mean, this one obviously just sounds like someone just got out of jail, um, kind of continuing on, on the story from, obviously, the, the previous song. Uh, Sonny shows up, and he's won and dead. Um, he's expecting to, like, meet with the boss, I believe, and, like, a whole bunch of people, like end up getting killed and because they show up or in the wrong place at the wrong time. And um, I don't really know the song that was like playing over it, but it sounded kind of like Motowny, and I always enjoy that. Um, so, I mean, that kind of get, keeps, keeps getting played throughout. Um, and then like the, the cops show up and then there's a rest and that's kind of, um, that's kind of the end of it. And so I, again, you know, it was interesting kind of getting like that two part um, song, even though like their titles are like, long and like diluted kind of a bit but um i gave it a four on five i like this song it was pretty cool good ending yeah i think it's an excellent way to end this already crazily fun i say fun because it is a fun album in a sense right it's like this twisted walk through the minds of these three guys from a depraved background i say depraved it's maybe not the best word but it sounds depraved this psycho experience but then again like when you think about it like it obviously can't just be like oh these guys from the hood who don't know anything because they always they featured so much classical um and different different types of classical music in their songs and different motowns you know different like, things so i even, thought that even was on really top cool. of that the amount of knowledge they put forth of uh, the system i mean there were predictions they made on this album especially about 9 11 and stuff like that that are just next level like virtually everything in premonitions came true yeah um so i don't creepy. mean to belittle them by saying it but it kind of adds this justification to how somebody can end up in a certain circumstances while painting and drawing attention to it while adding this serious latin flavor to it that like makes for this really great and distinct experience like i don't know a lot about cypress hill to be honest with you but i feel like this is some seriously protesty real 
underground like fucking message driven shit like they had a couple of songs alluding to what pop music being bad but it was so camouflaged into what they're doing that like these guys didn't do any of the checklist of annoying shit underground indie artists do they had a really fucking solid album i guess it's a 4.6 on 5 I can see how this is a classic. I can see myself wanting to go back to this. So much of this. Was, I feel like my entire review was crap for how little <laughs> I was able to properly like go into the depth of how profound their work is. And it's really amazing. And I really want to listen to more of it. Cool. Um, I mean, for me, like, I mean, I mean, you can kind of just justify, like, you know, you listen to my, my like, ratings. Um, I gave it a 3.98 on five, so it just missed the cuff. That's like a 79%. So from you know, so it's not quite a classic for me, but it's like almost there. Um, it, it is kind of a random album. There's, it's definitely not something that I would probably like go for again. Uh, that's just me. Um, like there wasn't like a like any song that I was like, oh yeah, I need to go back and listen to that. I mean, like maybe in the future, like you know, something will happen and I'll be like, oh yeah, I should really listen to it again. But, um, you know, it's uh, there's obviously like a lot of like violence and anger, but it's still like kind of fun and like good, even though it's like dark. It, it does kind of have that like, you know, juxtaposition between like good and evil sort of that kind of goes back and forth in it. And like the messages in it are good, like essentially. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's fair. So thank you all for watching. Yes. Please let us know in the comments anything that we fucked up or you want to add to the conversation or cool facts especially like we're not that we recognize how disconnected from the culture we are so sorry if it offends you too just to throw it in there i might start <laughs> saying that now um thanks to our patrons uh ismail gadamsi who made this happen um Lindell Williams in Super Old School 1994. Next week, we'll be doing an album from Super Old School 1994's uh, request because um, we owe him one as part of our Patreon agreement. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get con access to content early, support us so we can get better shit, you know, make it look a little nicer. You want to see it grow into something cooler, that's an awesome way to do that. Otherwise, you can subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button or dislike if you must. And uh, <laughs> just let us know in the comments what you thought because i would love to learn more and be better prepared for the future and i feel like you guys help a lot with that kind of thing so i genuinely appreciate that and thank you for watching it really means the world and you can follow us on twitter and all that other good stuff so peace and have a great day